Right, and now we are, we're at the end of explaining this week's Torah reading, which is et ve'etchanan, ve'etchanan, ve'etchanan. <clears throat> so let's just make a, um, before we, we learn uh, the commandment, the last, the last major part of this Torah portion, which is the commandment of Shema Yisrael, and putting on tefillin and doing mezuzah, Let's just look at the commandments in general that are in this Torah portion. Now, even though that this week's Torah portion, that this whole book is called the repetition of the Torah, Mishnah Torah, but still the fact is that there's a lot of new commandments that weren't in the first four books. And here are a few of them. In this Torah portion, this Torah reading, there are 12 commandments. Eight of them are positive commands, things that God wants us to do. And four of them are what's called prohibitions, things that God wants us to avoid. So here's one of them. A lot of them, of course, come from the Ten Commandments. So it is one of the, is, and you have to remember that the, the Ten Commandments were already told before in Parshat Yitro, right there near the beginning of the book of Exodus. So those commandments were already given there. But here we go. Not to desire in your heart a thing that belongs to others. Like it says, lotit ave. This is in addition to what it said over there in Parshat Yitro, lotachmod. Lotit ave, this commandment over here, as soon as you think in your heart how to buy something from your friend. I remember once I, I went to... <clears throat> Anyway, I saw somebody that had a picture. It was his own picture. He had a picture. It was a picture in his room. It was a bachar in the yeshiva. It was in America. I, I just went around <clears throat> talking to the different bachar in, in Hadara Torah. And there was one bachar over there that I just looked because I used to learn there. And he had this really nice picture on his wall of a lady with a little baby looking out her window. It was sort of like an impressionistic, you know, sort of like a Renoir sort of a picture. And it was really nice. So I said, uh, you really like this picture? He said, yeah. He says, listen. I said, listen, I'll buy it from you. He said, no, 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 I, I don't want to sell it. So I said, listen, I'll tell you what, you know what? I'll give you $100. No, no, $200. No, no, it's $300. He said, no. The head of the yeshiva, Rabbi Goldberg, he said, what are you doing? So I said, oh, I would like to buy the picture. He said, you knew you're transgressing one of the Ten Commandments. You're not allowed to desire something that a person, other person has. You ask him one time if he wants to sell it. He doesn't want to sell it, that's it, right? You can say, you want to sell it? No, no price, no price, was, that's all. Right? He doesn't want to sell it. You're not supposed to have desire for a thing that belongs to another person. That's not for sale. <laughs> Positive commandment. You have to unite God. You have to believe in a total unity that God is one. That's what we say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Echad. That God is one. Nothing is outside of God. Here's an explanation. If you want to know more about this, there's a book that's called Mitzvot Hashem, the commandments of God. You can get it. I think it's translated in English as well. That's how many commandments do we say there are 12 in this week's Torah portion. That's two of them. Positive commandment. You have to love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your might. Shema Yisrael. We're going to learn about that today. Another commandment. Commandment number three, loving God. You have to love God. Huh? Loving God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your might. Here we have a problem because these things eh, doesn't go down. See, it gets stuck over here. All right, what are we going to do? We got stuck. We got stuck. Let's see if we can get this somewhere else. One second. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, we'll move it away. All right, maybe we'll do it over here, huh? I think it'll work better. Let's see. Yeah, it's terrible. There we go. All right, <clears throat> and let's do this here. See, can we do? Now that's going to get rid of that. Eh. All right, you know what? I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you because I see this is not working. For some reason, in this um, machine over here, 
Um, if I put it over there, it doesn't. If I put it, okay, here, it doesn't go up. That's number two, three, commandment. Here are the commandments, right? Number one, <clears throat> right? don't desire things that are other people, uniting God, loving God with all of your heart and all of your might. Another commandment is uh, you say the words of Torah. You should learn Torah and you should teach it. Like it says, yes, and you should teach it. That's what it says. Another commandment is to say Shema Yisrael in the morning and the evening. You have to say Shema Yisrael, I don't know Yelena, I don't know We're going to see what we have over here in this week's Torah portion. It's a commandment to say it once in the morning and once in the evening every day of your life. Next commandment, to tie, to put tefillin on your hand. What is tefillin? That, that, that's explained in the Gomorrah what tefillin is. Another commandment is to put them on, on your head. Another commandment, tie tefillin on your head. Two separate commandments. Another commandment to put a mezuzah on your door. Four more commandments we have. That's, that was eight of them so far. A negative commandment, it, when there's a prophet, a prophet, some of you use prophecy, you're not allowed to test him too much. You can test him, but not too much. <clears throat> Next commandment, commandment number nine, a positive commandment to destroy the seven nations that are written in the Torah. Because this is a commandment which was only for Joshua when he came into the land of Israel. Now it's not anymore because he already destroyed them. Commandment number 11, not to give free gifts to these nations. Don't give away land of Israel. Don't give them money. Don't give them straw. Number 12, <clears throat> don't get married with a non-Jew. It's forbidden for a Jew and a non-Jew to marry. Like it says, lo titchaten, bom. You're not allowed to do Not to do that. Lo titchaten, bom, etc. Okay, those are the 12 commandments that are in this week's Torah portion. Now let's learn one part of this Torah portion itself. Here we go. Ready? Yes. Let's learn the Shema Yisrael. Even though there's some interesting things over here. One second. All right, ready? Before we get to Shema, there's a couple of sentences before Shema here. Eh. Yeah, mistake. Here we go. Olive. This is the commandment and the statutes and the laws that God put in front of you <clears throat> to learn them and to teach them, la la made, teach others to do in the land of Israel when you reach there. <clears throat> in order that you will fear God, your God. So we have a nice, beautiful Ramban over here, but I don't know if we're going to have time to read it here. But okay, we'll have a look and have a look at it. He says, it means like this, look. What does it seem to be? That you should do the commandments in order to come to fear God. Says the Ramban, that's not right. That's not right. It says, Yomer says, God commanded you to do the commandments in order that you will come to fear God. And this is the opinion of Reish Aleph. Then maybe it's talking about the Evan Ezra. I don't know. In any case, Whoever says this, he doesn't bring that opinion over here. And that the whole reason we do the Torah and the commandments is only to fear God. <clears throat> says the Ramban, that's very nice, but that's not true. It's not so, as far as I'm concerned. Like it says, you should do the commandments in order you will have long life and in order you will fear. 
that one of them is the reason to do the mitzvahs. I'm sorry. One of the, the reasons you'll do the mitzvahs in order to fear God. And the other one is that you'll have a long life when you actually do do the commandments, but not. Oh, well, Yomar, I think it's like this. God is commanding us that I should learn the commandments and I should do them in order that I will merit and I will fear God. But that's not the end. The end is that I will, because I fear God, I will do his commandments and I will teach my children and my children after them to land, do the commandments on the land. In other words, in Israel. Because in order to do the commandments, so commandments, doing the commandments, you will merit that you'll have children who fear God and they will be alive. They'll be in those, they'll continue on the Adama. Here the Adama is talking about the land that God gives us, the land of Israel. And your children and your children's children will also be there and they'll have long life on this portion of God, in other words, the land of Israel that God gave us. So in other words, the Ramban is saying the purpose of doing the commandments is not just to come to love God. The purpose of doing the commandments is only is in order that you'll come to fear God and then teach your children to fear God so that it'll carry on through the generations. And like it says, that you'll do the commandments that I command you, you and your sons, and you will be have long life well in the land of Israel. So that's the that's what the Ramban says. The Ramban also places a very a great emphasis on Israel. Even though the Ramban a lot of his life was not in Israel, but Jewish people listen Jewish people and do what is good for you and um and to, you, then you're going to get the land which is flowing milk and honey. And here it goes. What you do, do Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Listen, Jews, God is our God. God is one. Rashi, God is our God. What does it mean that God is our God? Says Rashi, now God is our God. Now. And he's not the God of the nations. Of the Elulim, because they worship all sorts of idols and spirits and things. But this God who atid liot Hashem Echad, he's going to be, in the days of the Mashiach, He'll be worshipped by everyone. says, I will transform all of the nations into a clear language that all of them will not call to their idols and forces and powers. They'll only call <clears throat> in the name of God, the creator of the world. And that, says, and that day, God will be one and his name will be one. That's talking about in the future, redemption. There's a lot of really nice explanations over here, but I really... I want to get to the Haftorah, so let's just sort of skip over this here. Let's see the Balaton here. It says, he says, Shema Yisrael, Shema is, I'm sorry, if you look at Shema Yisrael, the ayin is written big. In the Torah, it's written big, and the Dalit is written big. And that means aid. It means a witness, a testimony. I and a dollar are big because this is that you, Jewish people, you are my witnesses. And also that God exists. And also God is a witness that the Jews exist. Like it says, Hayiti aid memahir. Number one. Number two, in other words, we're witnesses that God exists and God is witness that we because that's how the Jewish people have survived all odds. And we're here we are because God is testifying that we're his people. That's, that's in Shema Yisrael. Shema is the ayin is big and the dalit is big and the echad. Shema is the numerical value 410. Huh? Is that right? Ayin is 70. Mem is 40. That's 110, three sh shin is 300, so 410. That's the gematria, 410, that the first temple stood. 
the sentence starts with the letter Shin and it ends with a Dalit to show you that all of the Shadim, that's like the, the, the bad spirits and destructive forces, they run away from anyone who says Shema Yisrael with intention. You're in, ever in trouble, you're Shema Yisrael, and all of the evil runs away. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what it says in the Orach, just in a short way. It says, why does it say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad? Listen, Jews, God is our God. God is one. Why doesn't it just say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Echad? Our God is one. So he says two reasons. <clears throat> First of all, even if there were a lot of gods and a lot of forces in the world, and they did all sorts of good things and wonderful things and powerful things, and they gave the Romans victory and the Babylonians victory, so you might think it's worth it to, buy, uh, to worship them. He says, no. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu. Our God is the one we're worshiping. We're not worshiping the others. That's number one. Number two, it says, and you should know that our God, even though there's a lot of other gods, forces, powers, but ours is the only one we worship. Another meaning is that our God is one. What does it mean he's one? That there's nothing except for him. He's the only God. He's the only real existence. So says, we need both of these things. Well, if you'd say that God is the only existence, so you say, okay, but if there was another existence, another God, maybe I'd worship him. So therefore it says, no, God, even if there's a lot of gods, the only one we worship is Elokeinu. He's the creator of the world. That's the only one we worship. And also you might think, well, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of other gods. You know, so, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be tempted by the others. Just don't be tempted. Our God is the only real one. The only real existence is our God. In a short way, that's what the Orachayim says. Very beautiful. You can look yourself. Ve'ahavta, and you will love. Hashem Elokecha, God, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. Rashi, you should love. You should do the commandments from love. It's not similar. A person who does the commandments from love to one who does the commandments from fear. A person that does from fear as soon as there's nothing to fear, be afraid, then he stops doing the commandments, right? A slave that's afraid of getting beat up, beat, beat up, and as soon as the master goes away and won't beat him up, so he does whatever he wants to. But if he does for love, then he doesn't care if the master is there or not. He loves the master. He wants to do what the master wants. You should love, what does it mean, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your might. All of your heart, this is with your two hearts, the, the good heart and the bad heart. In other words, the selfish soul and the godly soul. Another one, with all of your heart, that your heart should not be divided on God. When good things happen, I love God. When not good things happen, I, I don't. No, it should be you love God with all of your heart, no matter what. All of your soul. What does it mean, all of your soul? Even if someone says they'll kill you. If you leave Judaism, you love God with all of your soul. Since Rabbi Akiva said, I always wondered if I would do this commandment when they were raking the Romans, they were torturing them to death, and he yelled out, Shema Yisrael. But call me, with all of your, with all of your being, it says, with all of your money. There's some people that their money is worth more than their life, which is very common. A person comes into your house to steal the money, as it says, Ain Adamamid at Asimo Kaspo. You can't stand to see someone steal your money. You go crazy. Right? So, therefore, there's people, and there's also people who their, their, their money is really worth more then their life, they're willing to do all sorts of crazy things and, and not go to sleep for five, ten days or something, and to steal and to lie and to cheat in order to make money. They're willing to lose their whole life. Therefore, it says, you have to love God with all of your energy, even more than money. Another one, Modecha, says in the Mishnah, with all meat of the Modim Lach, anything that God gives you, you have to love him. Whether God for, whether God gives you good things and you're very successful, you don't forget about God, or whether it's a bad thing, God forbid, sometimes a, a good thing is worse because good things, people get rich and they forget about God totally. A person is poor, at least he doesn't think he's the king of the universe. So he says, but nevertheless, whether God does good or bad, we still love God. That's the commandment. But Cain Bedavid, also in King David, it says, Kotz Yeshua Sasah, but Yoga Anam King David said, I'm lifting the cup of salvation. 
And even though that I have found all sorts of tortures and terrible things happen to me. It says, Hafta, this is the same letters as Ha-Avot, the fathers, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. And that's what it corresponds to, Bakal Levavacha, with all of your heart. That corresponds to Avram. Like it says, like God said, I found his heart pure to love God with all of your soul, even if they're at the cost of your life. That's Yitzchak, that he gave himself to Hashem to be sacrificed when Avram took him for the Akedah. The call me Odecha, that's like Yaakov. Like Yaakov says, God said, He said that everything I have, I'm willing to give it over to God. The Orachayim, he says that there's three things that are very, I'll say it outside, three things that are very important to a person, and that is Bani Chayom Mizoni, his family, his, uh, his uh, possessions, and his health. And those are things that make a person crazy. Says that's why it says you have to love God. That's talking about your family. You have to love God, even if God forbid something bad happens. Family, never you have to love God. Even if things happen with your money, God forbid a person loses all his money, still should love God. Even with his health, he should love God. Look at this beautiful long. And these things that I'm commanding you today, they should be on your heart. Rashi says, what is love? What does it mean you should love God with all your heart? How do you express this love? Through the Torah, a Devorim Elu. That because you love God, you learn the Torah, and you, 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 you love God, so that you come to recognize God, and you learn the Torah, you recognize God, and then you come to cling to His ways. Right? You see what God exactly wants, and then you do what He says. These are the words that I command you today. What is it that I command you today? What does it mean today? These words that I command you. What do you mean I command you today? How many, how many things did God command them today? Uh, right? Not too many. Says the Rebbe, no. It means that the whole entire Torah should not be in your eyes like an old edict, like an old, uh, and you say, a, a commandment. She'ein adam. She ain't out on sofano. A person doesn't pay any attention to it, right? Here, this is an edict from the king, right? We are now going to have the, the new work program. It says, my friend, that came from Franklin Delano Roosevelt. There's no program like that. We don't have that program anymore. It's an old thing. It's the same thing, the Torah. Ah, the Torah. God gave that 3,000 years ago. It's an old thing. It says, don't look at the Torah that way. Elika Chadasha, it should be something that's brand new. Shakal Ratzim, that everybody wants to read it. What is that? This is the commandments of the king. It should be in your eyes like Hayom, like it's brand new every single second. You should teach it to your children and you should speak it. This is Shema Yisrael. We're supposed to say this twice a day at least. You should teach it to your children and speak the words of Torah. When you're, now some people say this means the Shema. You should say the Shema when you're sitting in your house, when you're walking on the road, and when you and when you go to sleep, and when you wake up from here, we learn, like we just finished learning the commandment, you're supposed to say Shema twice a day. Rashi, teach it to your children. What does this language of Shinantam? The word Shinantam means to be sharp also. That the words of Torah should be sharp in your mind, clear. That if someone asks you a question, you shouldn't have to stumble and bumble, but you should be very clear and you should give them exactly what the answer is as far as the Torah goes. Teach it to your children. Who are the children? Whatever person doesn't have any children. It says these are your pupils. We find everywhere that pupils are also called your children, and etc. And he brings a proof. The pu pupils are called children. You should speak them. The main speech, the words that you say should be in the words of Torah. The Torah should be the main thing, and that shouldn't be a secondary thing. Once in a while, you throw a word of Torah in. That should be the main thing you talk about. When should you talk about it? When you lay down at night, even if you go to sleep in the middle. You might think that even if you go down and sleep in the, even in the middle of the day, you should say Shema Yisrael. It says when you wake up. You might think even if you wake up in the middle of the night. Therefore, it says when you're sitting at home and you're walking in the way. 
In other words, when you're sitting at home and you're walking on the way, that's talking about all the rest of the times. That's Derek Eretz. It's talking about the, when it says when you go to sleep, it's not talking about when you personally go to sleep. When most people go to sleep and when most people wake up. Zman Shriva, Zman came, when you go to sleep, you should say Shema Yisrael. In other words, not that actually when you go to sleep. In the evening, when people go to sleep, it's a commandment to say Shema Yisrael. When the, as soon as the sun sets, it's a commandment to say Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Yechad. It's a commandment. It's a, some people say it's the commandment to say the whole first paragraph that's written here, the whole thing that's written here. And when you wake up in the morning, it means as soon as the sun rises up, even if you didn't go to sleep at all, in the nighttime you say, what, I, what about the rest of the day? It says that's already covered when it says when you're sitting in your house and you're walking on the road, right? Then you should, oh, that's talking about the words of Torah, though. When you're walking on the road, they're talking about the words of Torah, and the others are talking about saying the Shema. Teach it to your children. You should teach them that they should be sharp and speak them because this, you should remember me all the time if you say the words of Torah. You should tie them as a sign on your arm. That's one commandment. They should be the totafot between your eyes. What does this mean? So here's, here's really an example of why you have to have the oral Torah, why you have to ex explanation of the Torah, because this means absolutely nothing. It says you should tie these words on your arm. Which words? And it doesn't even say the words. It says you should tie them as a sign on your arm. And they should be as totafot. What does totafot mean? They should be between your eyes. So Rashi says, this is talking about the tefillin of the hand. You should tie. And they should be a sign between your eyes. These are the tefillin on the head. Why are they called totafot? Because there's four. Totafot, tut, in the language of katfi, whatever language that is, is two. Obviously, this language, somehow or other, God knew it was going to be before the world was created, because it was written in the Torah in this language. Tut means two, and pat in Afriki is two. So it means <clears throat> two and two, in other words, there has to be four uh, compartments to the tefillin, and there has to be four uh, different paragraphs which are written. How do you know which ones are written? The four paragraphs in the Torah where this commandment appears. That's what the uh, and you should write them on the mezuzot betecha, on the mezuzot of your house, on the doorpost of your house, and on your gates. Says Rashi, it doesn't say if you look in the Torah, it doesn't say mezuzot with a vav. It says mezuzat, implying only one. You only have to put one mezuzah on your door. You don't have to put two or more. And bisharecha, this includes also. All of the gates, including the gates of your city and the gates of your, uh, the, the gates, I'm sorry, of the country and the gates of the city. Some people had a, okay, I just want to let just look one quick thing here. This is what we said before that, oh, here's this commandment. It's a commandment and it says like this. When God takes you into the land that you're going there, and you, you'll meet a lot of non-Jews before you, the, the Chiti, the Girgashi, the Amori, the Kanani, the Prizi, the Chivi, Yevusi, seven nations which are greater than you. Greater than you. And God, don't worry about it. God will conquer them before you. You will destroy them and don't make any covenants with them. Don't make any covenants with them. It says, lo titchaten bam, lo tachanem, means you shouldn't give them any free gifts. It's for a person to say, and also you shouldn't praise them. Oh, look how nice this church is. Look how nice this. And also don't allow them to remain in the land of Israel. Non-Jews are not allowed to live in the land of Israel unless they accept on themselves seven Noahide commandments. 
And then they're allowed to. It doesn't mean that, they're, that they have to or that they can. It means that they're allowed to live in the land of Israel. Do not intermarry with them. Don't give your son to their daughter. I'm sorry, your daughter don't give to his son and your and his daughter don't take to your son. And here, this next one is going to be how we know that a Jew is determined by the mother. It says, because if you give your son, let me say, I'm sorry, if you give your son to his daughter, then he, he will turn your son from me. What do you mean your, he will, he will turn, you know, who is he, who's going to he, who's this he? He means if you give your daughter to a non-Jewish man, then he will turn your son from after me. In other words, he's still called your son. Here he's talking about your grandson. If you allow your son to marry, your, I'm sorry, your daughter to marry a non-Jew, then that non-Jew, Yasser, means he will turn your son, who's your son? Your grandson from after me. He's still called your grandson. In other words, if your daughter gets married to a non-Jew, then the children are still called your grandsons. And he'll serve other nations. So here we learn that what? That if Bano Shalkuti it says a son of a non-Jew, if that non-Jew marries your daughter, then he will take your son, in other words, your grandson, after me. Why is he still called your grandson? Because it's the son of your daughter. This teaches you that a daughter, that the son of your daughter, even if your daughter gets married to a non-Jew, he's called your son. He's still called a Jew. And his non-Jewish father will convince him to do idolatry. But if your son gets married to a non-Jewish woman, Bincha, if your son gets married to a non-Jewish woman, then the child that comes from that is not called your son. It's called her son. From this we learn, In other words, from this we learn that the child that comes from a Jewish woman, even if she, that Jewish woman marries a non-Jew, that child is called a Jew. And a child that comes from a non-Jewish woman, even though that non-Jewish woman marries a Jewish man, your son, but that child is called a non-Jew. It's called her son. It's not called your son anymore. Okay, just wanted to get that clear. And here, just one more sentence I would like to learn. Because you are a holy nation to God. God chose you. Anytime somebody asks you, how do you know God chose the Jews? Here it goes. God chose you to be his nation, a special nation from all the other nations that are on the face of the world. The Jews are the chosen nation of God. And what were they chosen for? To make God love. Some opinions say, that when it says over here, et Hashem Elokecha, that you should love God, your God, it means that God's name, means you should make God loved by others. You should be a good example that other people look at you and say, wow, people should say, wow, it's a good thing to love God. You should cause others to love God. And that's what the Jewish people are chosen for. That's today's lesson. But I would like to do also the Haftorah. So we're going to do that on a different...